Well, hello there, dear listener, and welcome to the second story of the decade. Don't worry, I'm not going to get into that long spiel again. That was fun the first time. I, I won't bore you with that. Um, so today's video is a different spin on my paranormal experience videos. All of these stories, in my opinion, have more of a positive spin to them. A lot of the time we listen to paranormal stories, read paranormal stories, all that, and we just kind of get the the scary side, right? The the spooky, terrifying, oh my gosh, ghosts. We don't often embrace that some paranormal experiences are in fact positive experiences. Because of this, I wanted to make a video that highlights some of those positive experiences. Some people will call the positive paranormal experiences angels. Some of them just call them ghosts, and some of them call them messages from beyond. Honestly, all of those are valid and applicable to the situations at hand, right? So overall, uh, again, I just want to embrace the positive side of paranormal stories. So with that, I will say, here are six paranormal stories with a positive spin. Enjoy. Okay, so this one is a two-parter and neither of which are terribly frightening as much as they are just unexplainable. For some background, my dad was married once before he married my mother. He had two boys from that first marriage. One son died in a car accident on his 18th birthday, two years before I was born. I've always felt a very serious connection or curiosity, for lack of a better word, toward him, slash the idea of him. I always just thought of it as a curiosity of who he may have been, and maybe that's all. Until recently. I was talking with my mom about Brett, my brother who had passed away, and sharing with her the fact that I had recently gone to the cemetery to clean up and put flowers around the area where he rests. For the first time in my life, my mother told me two stories that just blew my mind. The first was that apparently, when I was two years old, I told my parents an elaborate story about being up in the sky before I came to Earth and having a hard time deciding who I wanted to become my mommy and daddy. I told my parents that Brother Brett encouraged me to choose my current mom and dad and tell them that he loves them. I told my mom Brett was so nice and my best friend in heaven and the reason that we were all a family. My mom told me that my father burst into tears and left the room slightly angered thinking that my mom had somehow trained me to tell that story or something. It was so unexplainable, everyone was apparently very emotionally triggered by it. She then went on to say that years later, a similar event happened while we were vacationing in Puerto Rico. We were swimming in my T.O.'s pool, and I jokingly pretended to drown and told my dad to save me. When my dad did, I laughed and apparently super specifically told my dad of a time where him and Brett had played some sort of lifeguard game while they were on vacation in Mexico, decades before I was alive. When my dad asked me how I knew it, because no one was there beside my dad and brother, I told him, Brett told me. I have no recollection of these events occurring. My mother and father just told me all this. My dad said those experiences are what nudged him into exploring the idea of life after death, reincarnation, faith, etc. I will say that I've always had a palpable curiosity and connection with the idea of my brother, but the stories recently just completely blew my mind. Oh, and one last weird thing, this one I remember very clearly. In high school, my dad and I were driving to VT to meet my mother and sister, who had left a day earlier. I, just for the first time, had heard the song If You Wanna Sing It Out by Cat Stevens and was obsessed with it. I turned the song on to play for my dad and told him that I didn't know how to explain it, but the song really touched me and spoke to me. My dad started crying a little and told me that this song was his and Brett's song. I know, it's all super weird. Back in August, my dad was found unresponsive by his roommate. I didn't learn about this until the next morning because I lived two states away from him and his roommate finally got a hold of my mom who told me. I was worried, but I really thought he'd pull through because my dad had been in and out of the hospital over the past few years with his diabetes. He didn't really take care of himself, unfortunately. I was at work when my sister came to tell me that he was on life support and it wasn't looking good. A couple days later, his doctors informed me that his kidneys were shutting down, and if he wanted to say goodbye, we needed to come ASAP. The next morning after our long seven-hour drive, I finally got to see my dad. He was still on life support, of course, but I got to see him alive, and that's all that mattered to me. My family and I made the decision to take him off life support, and he was moved to hospice. I said my goodbyes, and we left waiting for that dreadful call. Later that night, 
I was scrolling through Facebook when I randomly started thinking, okay, if something weird happens, I'm gonna think it's dad because he could go at any time now. I know, very weird for me to randomly think about, but I'm sorta of glad that I did now. A few minutes later, my nephew's toy truck that was sitting on the coffee table in front of me started going off for no reason. Right when it did, my brain immediately said, Daddy's gone. I walked into my sister's room who was in her bed with my nephew trying to go to sleep, and I asked her if it had done that before. She just laughed and said no. I asked what makes it go off normally, and she said it goes off when it moves. I was still standing in my sister's doorway when it went off again. I would chalk it up to someone walking on the floor or something like that, but I saw it go off the first time and it did not move at all, and it just went off for no reason. Plus, we were all being completely still when it went off both times. I truly felt like my dad set it off to let me know he had crossed over. I told my sister and she thought I was just being ridiculous. Later, I was woken up in the middle of the night by my sister. I knew exactly why they woke me up, but I played dumb because I didn't want them to know that I already knew. They said he passed around 10.45 and my sister said, see it couldn't have been him because that was around 9.30 when the toy went off. Well, I learned on the day of his funeral that that wasn't the case. He was found around 10.45 but they estimated his death to be 9.15 to 9.30. I cried when I found that out because I knew it was him telling me he was gone, and I truly believe the second time it went off it was him saying, yes, it's me. I felt so comforted knowing that he let me know when he was gone. I do miss him like crazy, but I'm happy to know that he's at peace now. Another post on this subreddit triggered up some memories from my early childhood. When I was four, way back in the 1950s, I went down to the bank restroom in the basement. I was doing my business on the porcelain throne when an adult foot nudged my foot under the stall wall. Irritated, I kicked back at the foot. The next thing I knew, an adult was cajoling me to open the stall door and let him in. I got very frightened and I didn't know what to do. The stall was up against the wall, the first one in line. The creepy man forced the door open, which I was putting my shoulder against when it gave way. I was knocked flat on my back onto the floor from this. Looking up from the floor, I saw a very serene and dignified old man with gray white hair step up out of the wall. With a very sinister smile, he said to my attacker, his father is going to be down here in about 30 seconds. Believe me when I tell you this, you don't want to be here when he arrives. Whether of shame at getting caught in such an act or stunned by a man literally stepping out of the wall, my attacker raced away. I heard his steps pounding up the stairs. Seconds after that, my father arrived and was looming in the stall door looking down on me. He scooped me up and ran his hands all over me to make sure nothing was broken, and then raced after my assailant. By the time he got up to the stairs, the man had made it out of the bank and down the city streets. My father was a combat marine from World War II, and he'd also been a boxing champion on the 7th Fleet. He later said a voice shouted in his mind to run to the restroom right then and there. The attacker ran right by him. I'm obviously glad for that angel that stopped the assault upon me, but I'm equally glad that he chased off the guy before my dad could get there, because my dad surely would have beaten him to death. No doubt about it, that angel saved us both, me from the attacker, and my father from going to jail. So back in 2002, when I was five, my mother passed away from cancer. Shortly after her passing, I found two small angels made of some kind of stone or metal in the top drawer of my dresser, and I took comfort in them, as at this time I was being raised in a Christian household. I lost one at some point and cherished the other until I was seven. One night I was struggling to sleep due to missing my mother, and I couldn't find the one angel I had left, which made me even more upset. I buried my face in my pillow for not even a minute when I heard my door softly open. I just expected my dad to walk in, but when there were no footsteps, I looked toward the door. I saw a lady figure standing in the doorway with indistinct figures, but the presence felt like my mother's and she had the same scent. Immediately, I felt at peace and fell asleep. In the morning, I got up and my door was ajar, which was strange since as long as I could remember I slept with it shut. I asked my dad if he had got up at all and he said no, which leads me to believe that what I saw was very real. I never found the angel, but to this day, I feel as if my mother is watching over me. When I was 16, my parents and I were out spending the day together when we stumbled upon an antique store. I've always loved rings, so as I was looking at the selection, I found one that absolutely took my breath away. My parents saw how much I loved it, and they purchased it for me. I was so touched, and every time I looked at my ring, I remembered my parents. Fast forward around 10 years later, I had plans to go out with a friend for dinner. I remember removing my ring to wash my hands, but couldn't 
remember picking it up from the sink. When I returned home, I noticed my ring was missing. I searched everywhere. Jacket, pockets, car, dresser, my entire apartment. I even called the restaurant, but no luck. The ring was gone and I was beyond devastated. Now, 2016 was a very rough year for my family. Both of my grandparents passed away within months of each other. Family means everything to us, so this hit in a very rough time. A week passed by since I lost my ring, when I had the dream. It was my grandmother visiting me, and we were having a conversation when she mentioned the ring. I was overwhelmed and started crying when I felt this strong, magnetic pull from her. She held me and told me that she had found it. Don't cry anymore and place it on top of my dresser. I can't explain the sense of relief and comfort I felt when I woke up, but I knew my ring was there. Lo and behold, when I walked up to it, it was there, nothing obscuring its view. I haven't dreamt of her again, and I haven't heard of anyone else having a similar experience in a dream, but I would love to hear it if anyone else has had the same experience. For context, my older brother died when I was 17. He was two years older than me, and we went to the same high school. And after my brother graduated from high school, they hired completely new security staff for the following year when I was a junior. After my brother died, it was hard. It was May, and I still had to find the motivation and energy to not only wake up, but also do my schoolwork, finals, perform in the orchestra. A week after he had died, I had a performance at my school, so I sucked it up for the night and I performed. While I was there, my brother's volleyball coach came up to my mom and I, and he told us this story. A security guard who was working the kiosk where all the cars passed by when driving down the school's driveway. When he looked up and in front of him, there was a blonde boy that seemingly appeared out of nowhere. The boy asked him if the volleyball coach, he used his name, was at the school. The security guard said that he could leave him a message. He asked the boy where he had come from, and the boy simply said Georgia, and he wanted the volleyball coach to know that he was home. He looked away for a moment, and then the boy was gone. The school driveway is extremely long, around three quarters of a mile, and the surrounding area is open, but there was nobody. Later when the security guard told the volleyball coach about the boy who was looking for him, he said he didn't give a name, but it looked like the boy who had a memorial the day before. The school had had a memorial for my brother at the school chapel that prior night. The security guard was new, so he could not have known my brother, especially the fact that my brother played volleyball and had a deep connection with the volleyball coach. My brother and the coach, they had a very good relationship. The security guard would also have no idea who my brother was dating. My brother died in Arizona, but his girlfriend's name was Georgia. I didn't experience this, but I personally thought it was a very comforting story. Well, there you go, my, my dear, dear listeners. There were six paranormal stories, all that had a more positive twist. Honestly, these stories get really hard to read sometimes just because it's um, it's very very obvious how heartfelt these these stories are and how much they really mean to the people that write them. So to each and every one of you that I read the story of that gave me permission, I do want to say thank you. Uh, I hope that I put these stories in an appropriate light. I hope I didn't offend or cause any you know issues with it. I tried my best to keep these as positively spun as I could. Obviously, paranormal stories can kind of teeter on that. Is it a scary story, or is this a heartwarming story that really, uh, really tugs at the emotions, right? It's, it's, it's difficult. That all said, if you did enjoy my narration, please consider liking. Uh, it helps a lot. Trust me, you have no idea. Subscribing, so I know that you're interested in more stories. And also leaving me a comment, because I would love to hear from you. From here, I do hope you have a fantastic day. I hope the year treats you right. Uh, I hope if you're in part of the world where it's winter right now, you're able to stay nice and warm. And honestly, never take for granted uh, any of the days you have with your loved ones, because obviously while there may be signs and indications from some other side, uh, you never know when it'll be the last day, right? So just make sure you uh, don't take it for granted. Make sure those that you love know that you love them and spend as much time with everyone doing things that you enjoy as you possibly can. That all said, uh, until next time, my dear listeners, sleep well.